it's gonna be a normal thing, I guess. And it happens all the time, so I guess it's a normal thing. So why should it be any no big adult, deal? No parent, no relative, no somebody like that. If you felt you would feel safe. It's not that I didn't feel safe talking to them about it. Um, going through the life that I did and the, the weird things that I did and moving around and because moving around also meant that I didn't have stable friends. I kept having to lose them to move to this other town, make new friends. There was never really anything solid. And, and, and again, what, what, what was the moving all about? Just... You know, I never, I never figured it out. It could have been, you know, some people just, my mom is one of those people that doesn't really like to stay in one place for too long. Um, I, I feel that in myself, um, I moved four hours away from home when I was 17. The second I could, I moved out. And it could have been, I didn't want to be there anymore. You know, it was just this whole place filled with bad memories. And I love my family and my parents. But it wasn't the same for me anymore. And I didn't want to be there. And there's also this thing where it's like there's this whole other world out there that I've never, I've just been in this, you know, it was 17 years of all this pressure building up, these terrible things happening in this life that I lived, and I thought there's got to be something better. So I moved, and I'm going to move again, and I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to do it in an unstable or irresponsible way, but I, I feel that. I feel where she might have been coming from, where she wanted to be out of. Plus, you know, I don't, I was young. I don't know what she may have been dealing with. I know that she had had boyfriends in the past. They weren't always so great. I don't know if she's trying to get away from them or just bad situations or bad memories or I don't know how long she had been doing drugs. I don't know if that was ever a factor. Um, I have no idea, but yeah, moving around like that made it hard to feel like I could have a connection with somebody that wasn't like, I'm gonna need to cut it eventually. So when, when somebody says you go home, you mean you be at home, or you don't know where the hell home is. Right. And I, you know, I was always lucky enough. My father has lived in the same house since I was born. I've always had that place. Um, I mean, and he's had girlfriends there. There's a woman he's been with for a long time who's been living there since around the time my mom left. She's been there ever since then. Um living there just with my father my whole life that felt like me and my father's house when she moved in with her and her kids it kind of stopped feeling that way you know i mean i was home i had a home but i didn't really feel like i had my home anymore and that wasn't you know anything on my father he always tried to make it you know he always had this thing where you know you don't like someone i won't date them anymore you're my child this is your home I always had my room and everything to come back to. I was always lucky like that. But you know, there's just it's just a sense of this isn't this isn't my childhood home anymore. This is someone else's home with their kids in here too, and we don't really like each other that much. And we didn't when this all started happening. That was the troublesome child because all this bad stuff had happened to me. Um so yeah, there was never this feeling of total security. Stability. stability, yeah, real, real friendship up until then. So, you know, when you grow up like that, it's it's hard to feel like anyone will ever understand you, or you you're gonna talk to somebody and you're gonna get a good thing back. And that was reinforced when I, you know, one of the first people I tried to tell about this horrible thing that happened to me, just responded with this horribly insensitive just horrible horrible thing almost like it was a joke and you know the first boyfriend I'd ever had um, like in a serious relationship at college the first person I'd ever slept with consensually um, that's when I started getting night terrors I'm assuming because it, it subliminally brought back those memories and, and he was a good person he just he didn't understand you know, sometimes you can explain something to somebody and they won't, they won't get it. They just won't. Um, and that, that kept reinforcing this thing where, like, no one's going to understand when I talk to them about any of this. 
I can I can explain to you my abandonment issues, my trust issues, and my relationship with you. Here's my jealousy issues. Here's what pisses me off. Here's what makes me feel bad. Here's what's gonna make me kind of manic. Don't do these things. Um, and that doesn't always work. Sometimes someone, sometimes people just can't. They can't understand someone as much as if they try unless they've been there. But you're asking people to understand that how healthy were their lives? Hmm? How healthy were their lives? Yeah, that's the other thing. You know, you have no way of knowing what's going on in someone else's head. When you meet somebody and you date them or you become their friend, you know what they tell you. And that's it. Unless you've known them for a long period of time, you know what they tell you and that's it. And you have to go off of what they're telling you and trust that they're telling you the truth. So, you know... Is, is truth a major issue in, 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 in your peers, in your age group? I think it is. I think it is because is of that reinforced... Is betrayal a common event? Um... Yes, I think, and I think it's sometimes it's unintentional. Because of that whole thing where I think our generation, our society, tells us it's not okay to feel things at a higher level, at a more extreme level, to be a little bit, you know, not normal. Who's telling you that? Everyone? I don't know. Like, if you look at, I don't know, you could, you could look at anything. If you look at magazines, there's these people we idolize called celebrities, or they do something a little funny, a little eccentric, and they're, they're crazy. Angelina Jolie, crazy. Well, I was going to say Tom Cruise, but he's... Anyways, it, they do something out of the ordinary and then people are like, oh man, she's so weird. And then you've got these shows like The Real World where it's just a camera following people around their lives and then, you know, the chick's always crazy in their relationship and she has these emotions and now she's, and now she's crazy. Now she's over-emotional. And that word over-emotional I think is everywhere from, you know teachers and parents putting their kids on medication because they're a little bit eccentric and they're a little bit over emotional. Or perhaps they don't want to parent. Exactly, they don't want to do that. Severe. That's everywhere. Yeah. Parenting's huge with because that kind of thing. Is, is a major task. What's sad about that is is I feel like in my generation given, I mean it's it's almost like a divide. It feels like there's half of us trying to fix everything, and there's half of us trying to, you know, reform things and, and do these things, and we're working really hard, we're working all these jobs, even though we have these passions that we can't do because we just need to make money with these part-time jobs because the economy is so bad. We're working really hard, even though it looks like, you know, some people think we're not because we're just working all these small part-time jobs at McDonald's and all these other places that aren't great because we can't get anywhere else because some of us can't afford education because some of us don't know what to do and then there's this other half of my generation I feel like that doesn't I don't know how to explain they don't it's like they don't know when to stop the partying and I know that sounds weird but like I've noticed different generations where it seems like more mature people that are older people are a little bit older than me, you know, they'll, they'll go out, they'll have a good time for celebration, do whatever, and then the night ends, they wake up and, and do their thing. The younger it's getting underneath me, it seems, there's kids just ODing more now, there's kids getting alcohol poisoning now, there's just kids throwing all their money away in alcohol, and it's like they don't know when to stop because they don't know what else to do because no one's helping us. Because no one is, is reaching out to us. They're just saying, you, know, you just need to work harder. You just need to keep working these jobs. And you need to stop complaining. And you need to do this. And you need to do that. And control your emotions. And just help yourselves. Even though so, like a lot of us are working as hard as we can. We're not getting any help. Because... You've been so alive. What? You've been so alive. Yeah. About the American. Exactly. And it's like, it's just like, you know, you're born and you're raised and a lot of us are raised with this, a lot of us are raised in this culture where we're just thrown into things. You're just put here 
Yeah. And that's it. Well, there's, SATs. There's no purpose. There's no creative value. Right. You're just there. And like SAT standardized testing stuff, like it starts at an early age. Like you just get thrown into this standardized testing that some, that this one group of people made up, that's not going to work for everybody. You get thrown into it. If you don't do well in this thing, then you're not going to be a productive member of society. You need to be on medication. You need to do this. You need to do that. And then where does that leave people like us? Like, oh, we're not, we're not good at math. I'm not good at math. I'm not good at taking standardized tests. But I can write really well, but that's not seen as as important. To whom? To anybody, it seems. Not anybody, but to the people that matter. To the people in power, I guess. I don't know how to explain it. Because... Uh, there is tremendous value and there's tremendous power in the ability to communicate. Oh, absolutely. I knew that. Uh, perhaps you just told me. Nothing is greater than the power of communication. That's true. So. And that's what, that's what drives me crazy about a lot of people in power right now. You know. They don't care. They don't care. And, and we're, as, a, as like a nation, we're extending all of our resources to other countries and to other things. And like you said, when we're starving here and we're dying here, we just need to like, I just, I don't understand how hard of a concept it is for us to just like, we need to like pull in and fix ourselves before we can help anybody else. Um, I hear about, there's, you know, there's epidemics everywhere about heroin, all these things, like it's all going up, everyone's ODing all over the place. And I can't help. But to think it's really sad that when they try to treat this epidemic, I just, I never, I never see anyone being helped. I see them being put into rehabs, which I understand that the definition of a rehab or a hospital is to help. But that's the thing, people do these drugs and people get into these things to take them away from something in their life. And they might have started doing it because it looked fun, but they keep trying to get that feeling back because it's something they're lacking, or because there's something they want to forget, or because there's a situation they can't get out of. And that's the thing, you can't just, it's, it's, like, it's like slapping medication into children that are having problems at home. You can't just slap a band-aid on it and expect it to go away. You need to actually figure out what's wrong. There's this... There's a girl that's doing heroin on the street somewhere and she's screwing up her whole body and she's screwing up her whole life. But it's because she's trapped in this horrible situation. Maybe she has this abusive significant other. Maybe she is pregnant now. And maybe she doesn't have any money, and maybe she has no one to help her, and no family to help her. And the only thing she has is these drugs that she keeps getting from people. Taking away those drugs and, and sending her to a hospital for a couple weeks isn't going to fix it, because when, when she goes back home, she's not going to have anywhere to go. But back to that place that made her want to do those things in the first place. And I'm not going to lie... Do you feel that... I used to. Um, I used to really bad. I think the only thing that kept me here was my father and and the, the few people that were there, my brother and and my mother. Um, and I think I thought about it, you know, like back to the self-harm thing, it's something stupid that you're doing to take away something. Even if it doesn't make sense, even if you're inflicting more pain on yourself, it's still something you're trying to do to try to do anything other than what you're doing to feel what you're feeling. So I can't say that when I learned things, when I learned what drugs do, when I learned what this and that does, 
you know, I can't say that I didn't think about it. I didn't think of how great it would be to die at some points in my life, how great it would be not to feel any of that, how great it would be to just take something that would take it all away. I think everyone feels that way even if they don't have it accessible to them. What would you like to do to help your generation? I want them to talk. I want them to talk about what's happening to them. I, I can't tell you how many people I've met who I've gotten to open up to me about something horrible that happened to them. And people that, I'm talking about people that I know that use dr drugs in a really bad way, or they're alcoholics, or anything, even if they're not. And I can't tell you how many people I've talked to, I've gotten them to open up to me, who were astonished and just completely taken it back that I listened and that I acknowledged that that it was something big. It wasn't, it's not, it's not okay. It's not normal. I mean, normal as in like, it's not the way it should be. You know, drug use, rape, assault, the numbers are so scarily high at this point that when it happens, people just look the other way because they think it happens all the time. There's no helping it. And that's not true. And it's about changing your way of thought. It's with, and that's with anything. You want, you want rape to go down, stop telling little girls and teenagers to stop dressing a certain way and teach little boys to not fucking rape. Teach little boys that it's not okay to pull a girl's pigtails in fucking recess. Tell them it's not okay to chase after them when they say no. You want, you want, people to stop getting addicted to drugs and stop doing things to take them away from their lives don't tell them not to do it listen to their problems and help them fix them you gotta change your way of thinking you can't just you can't just slap things on them and just keep doing it until something might work for a couple people maybe possibly it's just not it just doesn't work that way and for me this right now and every other person that's ever listened to me talk about the things that's happened to me they helped me they kept me here my roommates my ex significant others family members strangers i've talked to strangers who listened they kept me here they kept me from doing things that would take me down that road to getting addicted to something. They fixed it with me. And some people don't realize it's all it takes. You know, so I think what I wish more than anything for this entire generation, this world to do is to just stop telling us that it's not okay to feel a certain way and stop slapping medication on everything. Stop saying we're over emotional. Stop saying we're overreacting. Stop looking the other way and shrugging your shoulders and saying something insensitive when someone tells you something horrible that happened. And start listening to them and start do something about it or just let them know that it's okay and that they're not tainted and they're not broken, they're not unfixable, and they, they're not, they're not freaks, and they're not, just because they haven't led a normal life doesn't mean they can't, whatever normal means. How about happy? You can be happy even though you've had a horrible life. It has taken me 20, well, I guess consciously, but it's taken me, you know, 18 years to realize that everything I'd been through doesn't define me. And that I have scars on my body and I have abandonment issues and I have trust issues. 
but I'm okay. And I have people that care about me, and I have things that I care about, and I have things that I want to do. And my mother did something horrible when I was little. She left me. She abandoned me. But she came back. And that matters. It's not unforgivable, because I think when I started letting myself feel, when I started admitting that, yeah, I have anxiety, I twitch my foot because I have ADHD, I, I cry. Maybe you just twitch your foot because you're nervous or anxious, whatever. It's just, some, it's literally just something I do constantly, right. and it's okay. And I... But that doesn't make you depressed. No. It doesn't, and, you know, I tried really, really hard not to be like her because I didn't want to end up like her. And then when I started realizing that, okay, I have a desire to travel like her. Okay, I, I can be anxious like her. I can be emotional like she can. I can be a little bit irresponsible like she can. That's okay. And I remember one of the times I was having a panic attack and I was feeling all of these things and I finally forgave her and I don't know how to explain that moment but I was so emotional and I was finally letting myself think that it's okay I'm having this panic attack right now I'm gonna be okay um, I'm flawed, I'm going to be flawed, I'm going to be irresponsible sometimes, I'm going to make mistakes, and that's when I finally felt that it was okay to be like her, and forgive her, because I recognized that she's just, she's not, she's my mom, she was my hero, she, she fucked up, but she's a person, and just because she did this one thing doesn't mean she's a bad person, it doesn't mean she's a bad mother. This one thing doesn't define her as a mother to me. And that's when I finally started seeing her like a person. Not the mother that ran out on me, not the mother that did drugs, not a drug addict. She's still my mother. And she's still a great mother because she came back and the amount of bravery that took. I didn't see it for a long time. But that makes her the best thing I could probably ever ask for. Because she came back. I just think that everyone, it doesn't matter how old you are or young you are or what political party you're a part of, how much power you have, you need to admit that there's something wrong and we need to accept that and then we need to start changing things. That's, it's that simple. We need to accept that we were wrong and that we are wrong right now. And then we need to fix it if we ever want anything to turn around. Thank you.